Well, um, because of how this develops, our lives are characterized by thoughts and feelings of deficiency. I won't quite do. Of desertion. No one really cares about me. So I have to do everything I can to manage them, right? And even that, you think, isn't really going to work. Dread. Many of our lives are just filled with dread. Dread to see morning come. Dread to think I have to go back to that job. Dread sickness. Dread financial failure. Dread growing old. And death. Right. So that, that's how the brokenness spells itself out. It's one of the great gifts of healing that comes from Jesus is his assurance that those who know him and love his word will never experience death. And they'll never experience desertion. And that they are sufficient in God. And that there's really nothing to dread. You believe that? Can you? I mean, now, you know, is that really in there? Because you see, if you, if you really dread nothing because of your knowledge of God, well, then you're moving out of brokenness. And you, say, you don't think anymore about how deficient you might be because you know where your sufficiency is. Right? And you know, as Jesus said, I'm with you always. As God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In Hebrews 12 and 13, there's a wonderful discussion about there how we're seeking a city that is not made with hands. A kingdom that can't be shaken. But if you don't have that, and and you know, it's we really do want to recognize that just profession of faith in Jesus doesn't bring that. Can we be honest about that? Now, there's no reason why it should. It was never meant to. See, what we're talking, the healing, we're, the healing of brokenness, overcoming the brokenness, comes from a path of discipleship to Jesus, not just faith in him. And we have to recognize that we have a form of Christianity today that accepts that and says, well, you can have faith in Christ and not change. You can have faith in Christ and not be a disciple. But see, if you don't accept that discipleship, then you certainly will not change. Because the change comes as a process of disciple. Now, now we use that word a lot. What is a disciple? A disciple is an apprentice. If I'm your disciple, I'm learning from you how to be like you. And in order to do that, I have to be with you. Right? See, that's, that's what disciple, it's apprenticeship. And I like the word apprenticeship because it has that practical aspect to it. Uh, we still have that in some, of the, uh, in some of the trades, don't we? Apprentice. And now, please try to think about your faith in Jesus as confidence in him. And understand that when you have confidence in him, not just something he did or something he said, you have confidence in him and you believe he's right. And you believe what he does is good. And you want to be in on it. So everything he said and everything he did, that says, wow, I want to learn how to do that. How do you do that? 
See, you know, if you're, a, if you're a, an apprentice in plumbing or any of the, the trades, yeah, that's changing on the inside also, isn't it? Right? I mean, you're developing a capacity, a feeling, a set of ideas, a set of the will, and you can do what needs to be done without thinking about it. Right? Now that's apprenticeship. That's real learning. And you change on the inside and your character becomes that of a plumber. Hmm? Now, as far as it goes, that's pretty good. You need more than that. But that's pretty good. And a good plumber is a good thing. Right? Where's Jorge? <laughs> A good plumber is a good thing. And it's character. And it comes down to things like, how far do you tighten the pipe? Well, not too much and not too little, just right. Now, who knows how to do that? The person who on the inside is a plumber. Hmm? Now, who knows how not to envy? <laughs> <laughs> 